Continuing on with the Mandalorian, we now come to chapter 13, The Jedi. This episode I loved from start to finish, and I would go as far to say it was the best episode in The Mandalorian thus far. Not only because it gave us our first look at Ahsoka Tano in live action, but also because it, it has a really unique story that we haven't seen much in The Mandalorian as well. So what happens? Mando heads to the planet Corvus, where he is in search for Ahsoka Tano. However, this town's leader gets to Mando first, and asks him to hunt down and kill Ahsoka. Mando then runs into her, and, she's, and he says he's been sent by bo -Katan. Ahsoka then takes a key interest in the child, who we have learned now that his name is Grogu. Ahsoka then tells Mando she needs some help in rescuing this town from its leader. Once the security around the town has been apprehended and the leader defeated, Ahsoka asks her where her master is, Grand Admiral Thrawn. So obviously the main focus in this episode um, is that we get our first look at Ahsoka Tano in live action, and personally I'm really really happy with it. Rosario Dawson is a really good body fit for Ahsoka, however they didn't use Ashley Eckstein's voice, which kind of disappointed me, however, thinking about it more, Ahsoka is more, much older at this point. So you sort of expect her voice to be a bit more older, and you need an older actor to match that. Something I did notice about Ahsoka as well was that she didn't use her backwards lightsaber form anymore. And one, I mean, aside from one shot near the end, which she did. Now, maybe they tried it, but it didn't quite work. Also, Ahsoka's Leku, so her head tells, looks really strange in this episode. They look creased, which is, um, you could sort of say that's battle scarred as well. You could say it's a bit battle scarred, but... To me, I think it's just the material they were using, and I think it's something that could be easily fixed, so I'm not too concerned about it, but I think it is worth pointing out. Another thing on the um, head tells of Leku, they're also a lot shorter than they were at the end of Star Wars Rebels. Um, in this episode, they just pass her, um, her, her chest area, but in Rebels, they go down towards nearly her hips. I was also surprised we saw Ahsoka as quickly as we did. I thought it would take until at least halfway through the episode for us to finally see Ahsoka. But sure enough, we see her right at the start, which is a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. We also see the child being tested and lightly trained by Ahsoka, where we find out his name is in fact Grogu. Which, I think it's nice they gave him a name rather than him just being called a child, or Baby Yoda as he's most commonly known as. I also love the lightsaber versus Beskar fight in the end. We saw when Ahsoka and Mando first met that Beskar is lightsaber proof, which I thought was a really nice touch to see Mando fighting Ahsoka with just his gauntlets. And I thought to myself, oh, we're going to see a fight between Ahsoka and the Beskar staff, and sure enough, we very much did, and it was very impressive. We also have this episode that Ahsoka is looking for Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now, I think this, set this is a setup I saw or hint towards an Ahsoka live action spin off which I'm very totally hyped for and ready for. I do however think this episode is just a tester for that though. To show people what they've done so far with the Queen live action and then for people to give feedback through this video and this episode um, and other like reviews and that and then they can use that to make improvements for the Ahsoka spin-off movie so they get it just right. So overall I really enjoyed this episode, mainly just because I wanted to see Ahsoka in live action but also because it's a really really good story and different from what we've seen before. So let's just wait until next time to see how Amanda takes the child next.